Hey guys, Quiv the Lazy Geek here and tonight we're gonna do something really, it's gonna be a really good night. It's such clear skies and we're gonna target two globular cl clusters like huge like masses of tons of stars put together. We're gonna target first a, col a cluster called Messier 3 and then a second one which is more famous the Hercules cluster M13, Messier 13 which has hundreds of thousands of stars. I've already started taking it in a previous night. We're gonna add more data to it today and we're gonna do all this with this equipment which is an EQ6R mount uh, which is one of the cheaper astrophotography mounts that can carry quite a bit of a payload. It's Chinese made, it has tons of little issues here and there, but overall it's awesome. Uh, I'm also going to use this telescope there, which is a Newtonian telescope. And Newtonian telescopes are one of the best like uh, cost to performance ratio that you can get in astrophotography. Although they are a bit more use, uh, difficult to use than refractors, like basically camera lenses, uh, because um, they, they, are, they typically have longer focal lengths, they're bigger, they're more unwieldy, they're, they're more sensitive to wind, blah blah blah. So there's more, di more difficulty but they're quite cheap and much cheaper than, than refractors. So I love this little Newtonian which is from Vixen R200SS. I'll be uh, using an, an autofocus, uh, our electronic focus here and this is very important. This Newtonian is made of uh, aluminum. It's gonna expand and uh, not expand like crazy during the night and it's gonna basically make me have to refocus constantly throughout the night and with this little thing from ZWO, the ZWO EAF, I am going to autofocus throughout the night to make sure that we keep the sh the, all the stars in those global clusters as sharp as possible throughout. Um, we're going to use uh, the ASI uh, 533 MC Pro as a camera, which is a cool astrophotography, astrophotography camera um, from ZWO. Uh, I have already put a review on uh, my YouTube channel. It is an awesome little camera and it can be used from here in Tokyo in a white zone, which is awesome. So uh, I have also a filter wheel that's connected here. We're not going to use it because I'm using a color camera. So it's just going to be stuck on the L filter. It's a simple luminance filter, which basically means it's, it filters out UV and IR. So it doesn't do much and it definitely does not cut off light pollution. And on top of here, I have a, a, a guide scope with a guiding camera, which is the uh, ZW ASI 178mm. Um, and we have uh, the guide scope is Skywatcher Evo Guide 50 ED, which is awesome, also by the way, although a bit on the expensive side. So let's uh, get started. I'm going to connect to this, this telescope with my computer. We're going to use the software called Nina today to control it. It's an awesome free open source piece of software. I have tons of tutorials on this channel. And let's start imaging as soon as it gets uh, a bit darker here. So see you in a moment. But before we start, look at this beauty around here. Venus is there shining right above uh, the scope. It's not even dark yet and it's so freaking bright. I can feel this is going to be a really good, uh, good imaging night. I like watching Venus uh, in this season just like set and being so bright uh, right before uh, the, the end of the astrono uh, astronomical twilight. And this is beautiful. And here we are, it's getting darker. There's a bit of light from my neighbor's house, but that's, you know, details. Uh, the wind has picked up, unfortunately. So this kind of Newtonian scope is a very big, like it's a sail in the wind. So my mount might struggle against that, but we'll see. Uh, precision is key for star clusters. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, but still, I really like this evening. It's a beautiful little evening. There's a bit of haze that came up over the horizon back there, but hey, not a big deal. Uh, M3 is uh, very close to Zenith already. Uh, we're gonna wait until uh, we get proper dark skies uh, to start, but uh, let's start setting up the se sequence. And for that, I'm gonna use Nina uh, connected to uh, my telescope equipment. Okay, and uh, here we are, it's getting 
still darker. We're connected to the telescope. Um, I've already connected all of the equipment to my computer. So I've already detailed how to do that in another video. So if you're interested, uh, have a look. And we're now going to actually set up the sequence. There's a bit of haze that's still making its way across the sky. Uh, let's hope it doesn't affect our imaging too much uh, tonight, but I'm still enthusiastic about it. And uh, we can always like try to weed out any bad frames uh, in the end with uh, the subframe uh, selector of PixInsight. So let's start with uh, setting up the sequence. Everything's connected, I'm all good. There's actually one thing I need to do, which is to make sure that I have my options for the end of my sequence to for the mount park and the camera to warm uh, properly at the end. And I'm gonna unpark the mount so that I don't forget it is uh, parked. Actually, there's a you know, functionality that will unpark it for me automatically, but I, I like doing things manually. So here we are, we're going to sequence. Uh, we have the default uh, settings in the sequence. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to first go into the Sky Atlas because this is what we're going to use. So we want to go to M3 and uh, not M31. Oh, come on. Where are you, M3? Um, here you are. Here you are. And we're going to say, uh, very simply enough, uh, first, let, hey, let's slew to it. Why not? With the telescope, while the telescope is slewing to it, we're going to set a sequence target. So we have the first uh, target here that's uh, M3, and I'm going to add another target there to be M13. So let's go into the, the uh, Sky Atlas again, and we're going to have M13, and we're going to search for that. Hopefully, yes, I get an easier uh, result to sort through, and we're going to set as a sequence target. And just as simple as that, we have our, our two targets already set. We're slewed in the vicinity of the first target. It's not quite dark already, so we can see whether we can center with the plate solver. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Let's try. Uh, it, it doesn't hurt to try. <laughs> and uh, I'll let you know if that worked. And believe it or not, it's actually working. We're quite uh, far from the target. We're four degrees away from uh, the target. We're synthing uh, the telescope if that's working, and then we'll be slewing the telescope. There it is, slewing. And we should take another exposure. I'm very impressed that it's working even in those uh, still very bright conditions outside. Uh, we're waiting for the timeout. I have a timeout of 15 seconds of that telescope after a slew so that we don't start taking exposure too early. EQ mode sometimes reports the slew is over before the slew is over, so it can get a bit complicated. We're getting the next exposure right now and hopefully the plate solving will have worked fine. And it did. We're right on target. Everything's going according to plan. Let's have a <laughs> look at this. Isn't that awesome? Like, it's not, it's not even dark outside yet. So my, my focus is off, but that's fine because now that I see that we can already like start taking uh, exposures that will be decent, we're actually going to uh, set the, start the an autofocus run because again, why not? You know, uh, it can be done all as part of the sequence and I'll, I will do it all as part of the sequence. But <laughs> while we're at it, I, I like being able to do that manually and to see the results. And it's so much fun to be, um, to be able to, you know, to set up a sequence and to get excited about the target you're gonna, you're gonna image. And we're having really good weather. Um, tomorrow I'll be able to go to my paragliding school. It's reopening. Uh, finally, I'm the, among, uh, amid the COVID-19 uh, issues. Uh, it's it's going to be mask, uh, not touching others, outdoors, etc. Uh, but I'm so excited about that as well. Oh, the autofocus is having issues <laughs> with the... It's, it's still a bit too bright outside, but hey, it actually might work kind of well. Uh, but it's, it's fine even if it doesn't work well because we can... Uh, we can we're going to restart the focus at the start of the sequence. Let's see how they, how, what it gives us. Oh, and if anyone wants videos about paragliding, uh, leave something in the comments. It's not related to astro, well, indirectly, because paragliding is in a bit of a dark area. It's not uh, in Tokyo as I am right now, so it's not in white zone. So I think I'm going to combine my paragliding hobby with my astrophotography hobby and bring the equipment there uh, someday. So maybe I'll cover that in the following vid video. Uh, the autofocus is kind of done. Uh, I'm actually impressed that it got such a decent curve in such conditions. And uh, yeah, I mean, there was, I was, you know, uh, this is a, a wood balcony, so I'm talking, I'm moving. Um, 
so it's not giving super great results but yeah why not it's uh, it's not too bad so we are more or less in focus now we're going to wait until it's darker to start the sequence i'm still going to go into the sequence folder and we're going to see that for m3 i'm going to uh, to start at around 8 pm i'll i, I can set a, a delay start uh, i could put like uh yeah, 20 minutes, right? So 1200 seconds. This is in seconds. It's still one of the weaknesses of Nina compared to others. We'll want to start guiding, slew the target, center targets. And while we're talking about guiding, I'm going to launch uh, PhD2 so that we, uh, we can actually start you know, the guiding process and connect PhD2 to uh, Nina. So I want to make sure I have my correct camera co connected. Everything's good. I'm going to have the telescope connected. Everything's good. I'm going to start the exposures. And still everything's good. Oh, this is going to be good. And I'm going to start uh, guiding while I'm at it, because why not? And then I'm going to go back to my imaging software, Nina, and connect the guider so that I don't forget. Here we are, guider is connected. Going back to the sequence and I'm going to take exposures maybe until uh, 11 p.m., 11.30 uh, p.m. That's when M13 should be uh, higher in the sky so that we can actually start slewing to it. Uh, I can actually double check if I go back to my sky atlas, uh, M13, yeah, at around, at around midnight actually. I'm gonna start at midnight for M13. So let's go back to the, uh, to the wizard there. And we're gonna say that I wanna take, my exposure time is kind of preset for me for, with my light pollution conditions, especially since we're near full moon still. Um, I'm gonna take 30 second exposures. I'm gonna try with 250 of them. And the duration is planned for around uh, two hours. So that puts me at uh, 10 p.m. We can take more. We can go to uh, 350, let's see. And we're gonna dither as well. And we're gonna dither every three frames. And we're gonna use the L filter and it's going to be light frames. And we're gonna start, have autofocus on start. We're gonna have autofocus after uh, 60 minutes as well, uh, just in case. And then we're gonna have autofocus after an HFR increase of 20%. And with that, I'm covered with the autofocus on this object. It's, uh, it's gonna be good. And here we can see that it's gonna uh, basically take two hours, 55 minutes, maybe. Uh, we can go, um, no, 200, 350 should be good because the dithering will actually add time to my uh, sequence. And then we're gonna go to M13. We're gonna do the same thing, start guiding, slew to target, center target. I should recreate a template for that, but whatever. We want to autofocus when we change to it. We want to autofocus after 60 minutes and we want to autofocus after HFR increase and uh, of 20%. And we're gonna do a time of 30 seconds and we're gonna do uh, 400 exposures and we're gonna dither every three frames and we're gonna use filter L. And, you know, I think we're already and I'm going to uh, start the sequence, which will be delayed by anyway, uh, 1200 seconds. And it's also starting to get, uh, to get cold here. So I'll uh, see you inside as well um, afterwards to, uh, to actually control everything from inside. This wind is a bit like chilling and also I'm wearing kind of uh, summer clothes. So I'm, I'm getting cold. So let's start the sequence. Here it is. And I'll see you inside. I'm inside. It's warm. Let's see. How the sequence is doing and it's just starting so we can see that the autofocus is starting i i just love it when you know things fall into place astrophotography doesn't have to be frustrating when you have a properly uh, automated equipment everything is just like so fun it, the, the whole hobby becomes just a, a whole lot of fun uh, I'll, I'll i'll watch this autofocus curve uh, get built and uh, and then we'll probably uh, have the plate solving and that's that's not a super beautiful autofocus curve but you can see it got the right point like the perfect focus point so we're all good let's have a look at what the final image uh, was it was uh, uh yeah very good very good not even too much affected by wind i really like how this is all falling into place and now the sequence has started on m3 we're going to finish our first exposure uh, we'll just have a look and then I'll let it uh, do its stuff and just, you know, enjoy my evening. So let's have a look at this first exposure. 
it is very affected by wind, so it's going to be thrown away. But that's fine because I'm sure among the exposures we will take, we'll have some good exposures. These I can throw away automatically. And, you know, if there's too much wind the whole night, well, too bad. It's not like, you know, I put too much effort into it either. So this, this is honestly a lot of fun. Okay. So let's, uh, let's, uh, let this uh, thing do its work. And then we'll look at the final results. We can see the second exposure is already much better. See you soon. And here we are uh, two days later. Uh, so it was actually not super successful as a session. So I had to, to reuse a lot of my frames from a couple of, light of nights earlier. I'm still, I managed to get uh, quite a few frames usable for M3 from uh, last night. And I managed to get uh, also a few from M13. And the results should be on your screen right now. Um, I want just to thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I really, I mean, regardless of, you know, how successful or unsuccessful a night is, it's always a pleasure to be out and, you know, look up, look at the stars. Uh, even in Tokyo, I find it impressive and it, it's better pretty much anywhere you are in the world. So don't forget to look up. I hope uh, this helped you do so. And uh, if you like this, click like and subscribe. And I hope I'll see you next time.